within job site lighting that we're really going to address is the overhead uh, temporary job site lighting. Uh, so as you guys can see overhead, uh, this is what uh, this is what you guys are looking at uh, on the ground floor. So uh, this is the radius LED high day light. Uh, and to give you guys an idea of what what this looks like on job sites today, uh, this isn't like a, people are buying one or two of these. Uh, these are purchased by the pallet load. Uh, and most commonly, uh, it's really commodity driven. Uh, these are coming in uh, pallets at a time to electrical contractors. And at that point, there's a whole process that goes into play to get these set up and ready to go on a job site. And then an additional process to maintain them on a job site, an additional process to remove and store them uh, after the job is done. Um, so what we really want to do with this product is really focus on improving that process. But we still maintain a high regard within the performance aspect of the product. So uh, with this, uh, with the, or the radius high day light, this thing puts out about 7,000 lumens, which matches 105 watt fluorescent. Um, and this thing runs at about 60 watts, so about 40% more efficient uh, with the same amount of performance. So uh, really setting the bar on size and performance. Um, but what, what I really want to focus on is the actual process itself. Uh, so as I said before, these things are purchased by a pallet load. Um, and the, immediately the first thing that's usually done for an electrical contractor is that these are dropped off at their prefab shop. At that point, these things come out of the box wired for 120 volts with a standard plug. Uh, it's very common for these to have to get rewired for different voltages uh, across the US. Anything from 120, 208, 277, really across the board. So what has to happen at that point, uh, everything's unwired here, wired up for a different voltage, packaged back up and sent out onto a job. We took a bit of a different approach. So uh, within, within the top cap of this, we just have a standard terminal block. Uh, this is multi-voltage uh, capable, so you can wire this thing up uh, from anything from 120 to 277 volts, uh, and this thing acts as a junction box. It used to be very standard that you would have exposed whips coming out of these things, and they would just have open connection with, with wire nuts. Uh, it's, now it's getting to where uh, a lot of the inspectors aren't allowing that to happen on job sites just due to the open uh, electrical connection, the exposure, and they're forcing them to put that, all those connections inside the junction box. So we took that junction box, integrated it into the product, and made it reusable. Uh, no longer the days of having uh, knockouts and having to put strain reliefs in, all that. Everything's sealed internal. So uh, as far as the strain reliefs on this product, capable of uh, accepting Romex, MC cable, up to 10 2, so pretty, pretty large diameter, probably something that's never going to be put on this, but still has the capability of doing it. Uh, so to put that in perspective, uh, once he's going to a fab shop, an electrical contractor is going to take five to seven minutes to rewire this for a different voltage. Uh, these can go straight directly to the job site, and it takes, as I, I timed the guy that, the licensed electrician that installed all these, and it was taking him about seven minutes to do the full installation for each one of these. So cutting that seven minutes completely out of the process, and as that compounds to 100, 200 of these on a job site, that's big money uh, for paying out a, uh, an electrician on a job. And these things, these things weigh about 25 pounds, these aren't light. Uh, and if you, you guys can feel free to come up afterwards and, and pick these up and do for yourself. Uh, so a huge opportunity for an improvement on the efficiency side there. Uh, we also looked at uh, the hanging style for these products. Uh, currently in the market, this is really what you get no matter whether or not you're buying some of the commoditized stuff or some of the new LED products that are hitting the market. Still the same, same style of hook, just a, really a half inch capacity. And as you can look around here, not a whole lot of opportunities to hang something with a hook this style. So what uh, most people are doing is just taking a, roll, taking a roll of wire with them, wrapping it 10 or 15 times, tying it up and moving to the next one. All that takes incremental time. And the issue is, is that once these are put up, it's not uncommon for them to have to move a couple times throughout the job. So uh, that installation process compounds very quickly. Uh, and again, we took a different approach. Uh, so what we did is integrated a, about a four foot cable that's connected to the product 
and it's uh, we made it a little easier to, to install. So there's a little serpentine that you route this cable through, and it actually actuates with a one-way cam. So once this uh, slides in, into the slot, you can't pull it out. But what you can do <coughs> is you can slide this down and adjust where this goes without the cable coming back out. So as things begin to be installed overhead, a lot of times you have to drop that light down farther or bring it back up so you can put all that additional material in there. And this is just streamlining the process, allowing them to do it a little more efficiently and uh, saving them time. Does it come with a cord? Yeah, so uh, out of the box, these will come wired up with a 120 volt, just a standard U-ground plug. Uh, most guys are probably going to throw it out, but we still want to give the opportunity for someone that may not need a licensed electrician to still use the product. So out of the box, it'll be good to go. Um, and then on the, on the stored side, uh, these things a lot of times don't make it through the entire job anyways. Once they take them down, they're, they're junked and thrown in the trash because usually the cages are beat up, bolts are broke, all that stuff. Uh, but once they do, if they do make it back to the shop, there's no convenient way to store this stuff. So what we did, uh, we created a design that's uh, a lot easier to be stacked and be uh, efficiently stored. So these are more commonly uh, stored in large four, four by four crates. Uh, so you can stack this to the brim uh, and fit about 50 of these in, in one four by four crate, where you can fit about 20 of these things. So uh, being a little more space conscious to those, to those guys uh, that have to store these in their shops. Uh, but that really addresses uh, how we're going to improve the, the overall tip lighting process. Uh, the one last thing that we haven't discussed is the overall durability of these products in the field. And if you were to look at this uh, in a lab environment and the overall lifespan of the lighting technology, it really comes down to this. Uh, a standard 105 watt fluorescent high bay light uh, has about a 10,000 hour operation time frame. That's just the the technology of the bulb, and, and that's the end of the slide. Uh, more commonly than not, they don't make it that long on a job site. Uh, but what we do, and this, this stands true for all the Milwaukee lighting products, is that we design all these products to last 50,000 hours. And that's how we're able to stand behind these with a five-year tool warranty and that limited lifetime LED warranty as well. Uh, and as I said before, uh, on the durability side, uh, impacts are the biggest biggest culprit for making these fail prematurely. 